Thankfully, Hurricane Laura, which made landfall being categorized as a category 4 hurricane, has been brought down to a tropical storm. Still, this doesn't mean that it can't and hasn't already caused significant damage and is believed to have claimed the lives of at least four people at the time of this recording. Within nine hours, the hurricane dropped from a category 4 to a category 1, having sustained winds of 150 miles an hour down to 75 miles per hour. As you can imagine, as the hurricane weakened, it caused less destruction, but it certainly still left terror in its path. As previously mentioned, it's dropped down to a tropical storm as of this recording and is expected to make its way through Arkansas, Kentucky, both Virginia's, Maryland, Delaware, and parts of New Jersey, as well as Tennessee. The coasts of Massachusetts and Rhode Island may feel parts of Laura as well, as it's expected to head out toward Nova Scotia and Newfoundland before ending in the North Atlantic. This is expected to happen between August 27th until September 1st, and hopefully will continue getting weaker as it progresses. But what if the opposite happens? What if the rain, the winds, and the power picks up? Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if Hurricane Laura upgraded to category 5. How's it going guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host Jared Bronstein and today we are talking about hurricanes. Buckle up because we're officially in hurricane season. I mean we kind of have been for a while and you know we love talking hurricanes on here. As always make sure to stick around to the end of this one as I'll be replying to some of your comments from a previous video but for now let's jump into it. As I usually do when speaking of hurricanes let's get a quick refresher on the whole category system and talk about the differences between a tropical storm and a hurricane. Spoiler it's mainly just the strength of the sustained winds. To start a category 1 hurricane is a hurricane with sustained winds of 74 to 95 miles per hour. The categories increase based on the sustained winds, but there isn't any consistency really among the wind speeds. For example, a category 2 is winds of 96 to 110 miles per hour, a 3 is 111 to 129 miles per hour, a 4 would be 130 to 156, and a category 5 is anything above 156 miles per hour. Any hurricane from 3 to 5 is considered a major hurricane, and to no surprise, the amount of damage expected from the hurricane winds significantly increases with each category. As per the Saphir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale, which is on the National Hurricane Center's website, a Category 1 hurricane is described to include very dangerous winds that will produce some damage. Well constructed frame homes could have damage to roof, shingles, vinyl siding, and gutters. Large branches of trees will snap, and shallowly rooted trees may be toppled. Extensive damage to power lines and poles likely will result in power outages that could last a few to several days. To no surprise, Laura has caused significant damage, but when it first made landfall, it was a Category 4. That's described to include catastrophic damage. Well built framed homes can sustain severe damage with loss of most of the roof structure and or some exterior walls. Most trees will be snapped and uprooted and power poles down. Fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas. Power outages will last weeks to possibly months. Most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. However, hurricanes also cause storm surges, which is the measured rise in water levels above the normal tidal level. At one point, surges of up to 9 feet were being reported in Louisiana, with the coastal areas of New Orleans, Grand Isle, Morgan City, Lake Charles, and even parts of Texas such as Houston and Beaumont being affected. In some areas, the surge was expected to reach between 10 to 20 feet. This is incredibly dangerous as it could lead to flash flooding and tons of damage on top of the heavy winds and rain. Hurricanes are also likely to spawn tornadoes, in which Laura has already produced at least two. Now, the difference between tornadoes and hurricanes is where they form, as well as how powerful they usually are and how long they last. Tornadoes are formed on land and can pack winds of up to 300 miles per hour, but usually last about an hour, if that. Hurricanes, on the other hand, as we know, tend to last a lot longer. We're talking possibly weak and usually don't reach sustained winds more than 160 miles per hour. Neither of them are good. Thankfully, however, Laura dropped down to a tropical storm, so let's talk about what that is, then get into the idea of it jumping up to a category 5. A tropical storm is a category 0 hurricane, if you will. At the end of the day, both hurricanes and tropical storms are considered tropical cyclones. The difference between the two is that hurricanes have minimum sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour or greater, while anything less powerful is considered a tropical storm. They're both considered tropical cyclones, as that's just the umbrella term. Alrighty, so now that we're all caught up on what's what, let's get to some hypotheticals and talk about what happens if Laura is able to jump back up to a Category 5 hurricane while assuming it continues in the path that it's projected to go. As of this recording, Laura is tiptoeing over to Arkansas, and truth be told, there's no way of knowing how quickly it could turn into a Category 5, meaning we could look at this one of two ways. Either the hurricane makes its way northeast and continues to get stronger and stronger, ultimately hitting the Category 5 mark as it makes its way across the North Atlantic into Nova Scotia, or we assume it jumps to a Category 5 right as it hits Arkansas. There's tons of other scenarios we could hypothetically look at as well, but for the sake of this video, let's just say the second it crosses the state line into Arkansas, it really ramps up the winds. This isn't the worst thing in the world as the storm 
surge wouldn't matter all that much. The hurricane would be cutting through states which aren't on the coast, so the flooding will likely only come from, if at all, the heavy rain that the hurricane would likely bring. With that being said, it's much more likely tornadoes are formed, which would still cause significant damages to numerous towns and cities. And there's no way of knowing for sure how many tornadoes could form. For example, Katrina spawned just one tornado in Florida upon landfall, but when it made landfall again in Louisiana, it created 20. In total, Katrina was responsible for 33 tornadoes, but that's nothing compared to Hurricane Rita, who was responsible for up to about 90 tornadoes. Yeah, things can definitely go from bad to worse. Now going back to what a Category 5 hurricane is described as, which is winds of 157 miles per hour or greater, as well as destruction that likely leads to significant power outages across the states affected, homes being destroyed, and flash floods, how do things play out? Again, it's possible the hurricane dies down as it makes its way across the states, but if it maintains its strength all the way through, then it would likely leave millions of people without a home, or power, and tens of millions affected across the United States and even parts of Canada. But we also can't forget our current situation. We're still in a pandemic, so the idea of large groups of people cramming into shelters or any safe space while fleeing from the hurricane isn't really an option, but there may not be another choice. As per the National Hurricane Center's website, a Category 5 hurricane could leave places without power and uninhabitable for weeks, possibly even months. And as it were to inch towards the Atlantic, any of the cities, towns, and even states that are on the coast would certainly have to deal with storm surges. Given that it appears the storm will make its way across the entire state of Delaware and the majority of New Jersey, as well as parts of New York, specifically Long Island and Rhode Island, a lot of damage would be done. Some places may never be able to fully recover, or it could take years for things to start appearing to go back to normal. But again, going back to the pandemic, it's likely this storm would affect tens of millions of Americans across different states who would need to find a safe haven or shelter until they can return home. Unfortunately, the majority of homes would be completely destroyed and people would need a place to stay for a very long time. This could lead to large numbers of people getting together, which would likely just make the pandemic even worse than it already is. Given that the United States has confirmed to have just under 6 million total cases at the time of this recording, you can be sure that number would be shooting up if Laura became more extreme. However, even a less powerful hurricane can cause significant destruction. Hurricane Sandy, which was the deadliest and most destructive hurricane in the Atlantic of the 2012 season, ended up costing 70 billion in damages. It was a Category 3. Now, to assume that a Category 5 would be worse isn't always the case, but odds are, it would be one of the worst hurricanes in recent years. Ultimately, we should be grateful that Lara has gone down to a tropical storm. But again, don't let that fool you. She's still dangerous and you should definitely listen to local authorities and government officials as they likely know more than we do. Unfortunately, it seems the worst is yet to come regarding hurricane season as September is believed to be the peak. Thus far, things haven't been too, too bad, but I certainly hope I won't regret saying that in a few weeks. We also didn't even touch on Canada, but to no surprise, if a Category 5 hurricane hit the small islands that are Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, well, they would also deal with incredibly significant damage. Flooding is a guarantee, as well as a high death toll and a couple million would certainly be a there as well. Now technically Nova Scotia is a peninsula, not an island, but you get what I'm saying, it's surrounded by water. Hurricanes near water are never a good situation, but unfortunately, as I said before, that's where they start. And we also can't forget all those tornadoes that would likely come from this bad boy, or should I say girl, which could potentially see triple digits. All in all, it'd just be really bad vibes. And there you guys have it for what if Hurricane Laura upgraded to Category 5. Let me know your thoughts on this one down below. Hopefully we don't have any Category 5s this year, but that's obviously to be determined. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, Top 10 Donald Trump freakouts. Captain Argonaut24 said, when haven't Donald Trump freaked out over something? He hasn't freaked out over everything. I mean, I'm not gonna try to stand here and defend the guy. He's very emotional. And I know that our channel has a lot of Trump supporters because a lot of the comments on this video were literally just like, Trump 2020, I'm unsubscribing, screw you guys. I'm not even trying to talk trash about Trump. I'm literally just saying he's a pretty emotional guy. He gets on Twitter a lot, he lets his emotions get the best of him, and that's it. You know, take it for what you will, but he does freak out a lot because he's very emotional. Tech Metal Gaming said, next time, do top 10 times Joe Biden couldn't make a coherent sentence. <laughs> Well, I could definitely off the top of my head talk about the time that he said he'll do a physical, but he couldn't say that. He was like, I'll do a phys uh, uh, physically, uh, I'll do that test to show how good I am. And there's also the time that he said that he doesn't mind when I think he said like little kids touch, like rub up against his leg hairs or something. It was really weird. You guys can look it up and type in like Joe Biden kid's leg. It's really weird. I don't know what he was trying to say, uh, but we could definitely do a top 10 list on Biden for sure. I would love to because he's, I mean, there's a reason why Trump calls him Sleepy Joe. Emma Starr said, I missed the talk of the SCPs and Lovecraft stuff. Well, then you guys gotta let us know. If you guys want more SCP stuff, I would love to do it. We actually did a couple SCP stuff. We didn't think you guys wanted to see it. Like all the horror stuff, we're like, you guys don't want that, so we stopped giving that to you. But if you guys want the horror stuff, my pleasure, because I actually really enjoyed doing the SCPs. At first, incredibly confusing, kind of gave me a headache, but after a while, I got into it, and now I get it, and I'm kind of obsessed. And you know what? I might just go home and just read some SCPs myself, just because why not? Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Stay safe if you are affected by the hurricane and we'll see you guys in the next one.